Good afternoon. As promised, we are out and about visiting new organs in new churches. Well, it's not a new organ, it's not a new church, but it is to us. And um, we're in a little village somewhere between Bonn and Koblenz. Now, do you know where Bonn is and do you know where Koblenz is? Bonn used to be the capital city of Germany and Koblenz is where the river Rhine meets the river Mosel. And we are pretty much halfway between Bonn and uh, Koblenz in a little village called Sinzig. And uh, this is a rather famous organ in the church St. Peter in Sinzig. Uh, it looks like a normal church organ, but believe me, it's not. Here we are upstairs at the console of this organ in St. Peter. And well, as you can see, we're right in front of the pipe. So it's, you know, it's in your face kind of stuff. And the first thing that you sort of uh, see when you come up here is this rather interesting looking console. I bet you've never seen a console like this before. Look at all these pretty lights. Uh, yeah, everything, all these, these are all the stops. They all light up when you switch them on and off, which is fine. And then over on this side, we've got some rather bizarre little toys. And then here we've got some more bizarre little toys. But once you sort of know what you're doing, it, to, uh, the organist here, Benedict, he's sort of, he spent 20 minutes showing me roughly what you can do with this machine. And uh, I still don't understand half of it. But when you have it set up as a normal organ, it sounds like a normal organ. <laughs> until you have one of these blue chaps in. And that's what I meant by almost a cinema organ. We've got a little toy counter to play with as well. Let's have a closer look. Why, in this perfectly normal church, in this perfectly normal sleepy little village in central Germany, basically, well, sort of in the west of Germany, along the River Rhine, the ships running up and down the river, tourists in the summertime eating ice cream, and, you know, nice normal people in a nice normal German village. Why on earth do they need such a bizarre instrument in their church? Well, back in the 70s, the organist here, a rather eccentric chap, also called Peter, decided he wanted an avant-garde style organ in his church so that he could do some crazy avant-garde music. And that was quite a big thing. And that he sort of started a tradition of rather sort of weird organ styles. And that continues to today. There's an organ in Cologne, funnily also called St. Peter, which features basically the same kind of stuff that this one does. It even features parts of this organ that were removed from the church at a later date because they were so bizarre. Uh, they've made their way up to Cologne uh, where that's happening. Now, it's going to take me forever to explain what all of these things are. And there are also some features here that even Benedict, who's been here for well, basically since he was a little boy, he grew up here and he, he's known this organ since you know he was a little guy. Uh, even he doesn't know what some of these things mean. We'll get to that in a minute. It's very strange. Please bear with us. When you sit at this organ for the first time, you sort of realize well, that there are the usual stops you're going to find on most organs. For example, in the great division, we have some eight and four, even there's a normal mixture and all those things. So. <laughs> perfectly normal. We have on the bottom manual, that's the Rook positive, that's the pipes that are behind the organist, and here again, a perfectly normal eight foot, four foot, two foot stops. Perfectly normal, nothing terribly out of the ordinary yet. Upstairs here we have a swell division and of course with my swell pedal I can open and close the shutters there. You can see them right in front of the organist. I don't know if that's coming through on the video. It might, it might not. It's very dark in here. But it's a very sort of dark and rainy day today. It's not very bright. But anyway, normal stuff again. <laughs> So those are the green stops, the red stops, or the orange as they are now, they are for the reed stops, so perfectly normal. Same here, downstairs, I've, uh, upstairs, sorry, I've got 16 and 8 foot up on the swell. 
It's got that sort of 1970s German nasal sound here. I haven't told you who built this organ yet, but if I... Most people around the rest of the world won't know this organ builder, but we'll get to him in a minute. Downstairs we have a strange dulcian, which actually sounds more like a vox humana. If I add the tremulant, it really does sound like a vox humana. So far, so good. And of course, in the pedal as well, there are all the usual stops you're going to find 16, 8, and 4, that sort of thing. Okay? And a couple of reeds. We'll get to them in a minute as well. There's even a uh, shamad, horizontal trumpets, and they're rather exciting. quite deafening when you're sitting at the console because they're literally in front of your face. So, so far, so good. Normal organ. Or is it? So when you look even closer at these stops here, you see the sort of normal eight, four, two, and all the rest of that. And then, but in between you see some rather bizarre things. This one says Aubert, and it's got five and a third, two to four. That means there are, it starts out as a two-rank mixture, as it were, and, and then turns into a four-rank mixture, which is rather weird. But this Oberto, that means Obertone in German, which is of course, uh, which of course means the the overtones, yeah. So the upper harmonics. We're talking about upper harmonics here in organ speak, as it were. So we'll get to that in a minute as we carry on here. We find something rather bizarre, moll terz, it says, so that means minor third, 16 nineteenths, a minor third. So most mixtures are most, most of these sort of these fancy sort of in-between stops that we have, most of them are fifths and major thirds, but here we have a minor third. So let's find out what that sounds like in a minute. So we keep going along, everything's fairly normal so far until we get here again. So here we have some more overtones. One one seventh, it says this time. So we're talking sevenths. So we're probably talking, yeah, like a uh, a minor seventh. Yeah. So if I'm playing C, that would be a B flat. That sounds at the same time. That belongs to the harmonic harmonic uh, harmonic range. So that shouldn't be yeah, it shouldn't be too weird. We've come across that in other organs as well. Down in the pedals, we have a very strange thing called theor dot. Who knows what that's called? And that's six and two fifths. Good heavens. And that's, there's three of them in there, so goodness knows what that sounds like. We'll get to that in a minute. And then as we keep going all the way along, down into the rook positive, we find this rather strange one here, 15. That means 15. And it even says eight fifteenths under there. So what this is, this is a, not a minor seventh like this one up here. This is a major seventh. This is a weird organ. Let's see what some of these things sound like. I'm kind of interested. Right, uh, a bit uh, safety warning, okay? What you're about to hear can fry the inside of your head, okay? I've just done this scene that we're doing now. I've just done it in German, and my, my brain just sort of stopped working in the middle. So, uh, yeah, let's see how we get on here. What we're going to do, I'm going to show you what these funny sort of things are. And I'm going to start out by showing you what a normal mixture is. Yeah? So here it says mixture based on a two-foot pipe starting sound and five ranks in there. Okay, so we've got five pipes sounding simultaneously. Okay? And those pipes are basically one, two, three, four, five. Okay? So it's a C a couple of C's and a couple of G's, basically, okay? And they sound at the same time. And to save fingers, it's all in one. Okay? So far, so good. And that's sort of how every organist is brought up to understand how mixtures work. Now, sometimes you get some sort of cool mixtures, <coughs> excuse me, that have some sort of, maybe have a third in there as well, yeah? For example, we have a sesqui alter here. We know that from other organs. Oops, it starts here probably. No, it doesn't. It starts here. It starts there. Okay, and that gives you the clarinetti effect. Okay? 
So that's basically a fifth and a third sounding at the same time as your foundation note. Okay, got me so far? We've talked about this in other ones, okay? And that so far a sort of normal mixture stuff. Now this organ has got some things that are just way out there. I'm not gonna sort of, I'm not, I don't want to be nasty about anybody, but when this guy, Peter, put the organ in here back in the 70s, I mean, he wasn't a young guy when he did this. He wasn't like 10 when he did this. So I reckon we're talking someone who was around in the mid to late 60s and enjoyed the substances involved in the 60s, if you know what I mean, yeah? So when he came to sort of sit at his organ and um, plan it, I, I think there was more than just his uh, normal brain activity involved. For example, this thing, I've already told you, it's got to do with the harmonic row, it's got to do with overtones and things like that. So it's a two to four rank mixture based on a five and a third length. So that means we're based on, what's that, a G. So if I'm playing a C, one of the notes in there is going to be a G. But it's not. On its own, that sounds like a sort of mixture down below. There are some weird things going on there. If I add, uh, let's say I add a four foot stop to that. The higher you get, the more metallic it sounds. Down here, it sounds really straight. So if I add some eight foot stops to that, and play a random selection of notes, you get a very, very, very strange sound. Based on sort of harmonic ranges, I'll give you that, based on the harmonic series, but I can't actually tell you what's really going on there. My brain hasn't yet been able to work it out. Weird, isn't it? Um, it sort of sounds more like sort of Asian bells, like a gamelan or something. It's sort of got a metallic percussive sound to it. It's really rather weird. Now here, there's this thing with sevenths up in the upper manual, yeah? and that's almost normal. That's almost normal. But down here, in the rook positive, we have something very strange. It's not a... Now, when I say seventh, what I mean is a minor seventh. Wait a minute, let me explain that to you. That means if I'm playing this note here, C, yeah? This thing with the seventh, what it's doing is it's taking not this note, not this note, not this one, but this one, okay? So that seventh, that B flat is going to be in there. So that's the harmonic series. You've got the first note, the octave, fifth, another octave, third, fifth, then the next one is a minor seventh. Now it's not exactly that because they're tuned ever so slightly differently. That's how the harmonic series is made up. But this thing has a minor seventh. can hear that note in there. Now down here, this has got a major seventh, which means instead of this C, it's playing a B, which is just really freaky. Listen to this. As you get higher up the keyboard, it starts to sound almost normal. Sounds like a very high stop, ever so slightly out of tune, yeah? It probably causes absolute havoc with people sitting in the church who are wearing hearing aids with those sort of loop systems, yeah? But, well, anyway, can't do anything about that. So there's all this sort of weird stuff going on there. What on earth do you do with it? Well, you sort of set up these weird mixtures. Let me do it here as well. I'm going to add that. No, I won't add that. And then down here we've got this. I'll add that. Um, it's all for experimental music. What does that mean? Listen to this.
That, believe it or not, is a style of improvisation that has thankfully almost died out. Um, that's not true, of course. There are people who can do it really professionally, much better than me, and they know exactly what these things are, and they know really how to use them. And uh, yeah, but that's basically what's going on here, yeah? That's sort of these weird harmonic series things built into a perfectly normal church organ to really sort of go crazy on when you're improvising. It's too much for me. It's probably too much for you as well. Let's find out something else about this magnificent instrument. When we filmed last time's video, last week's video, I said next week we're going to visit an organ that's almost a cinema organ. What exactly did I mean by that? What I meant was this. <laughs> Yes, that is a real xylophone in the organ, and it's played purely pneumatically from the keys here, which is absolutely wonderful. There's a rather bizarre thing up here, which sounds like tuned sleigh bells for Christmas. Really weird. And then there's a perfectly normal bell in there. So, yeah, we've got some sort of weird effects, perfect for your old-fashioned cinema organ music. <sighs> That's more like it. Now I sort of understand what this organ's all about. Weird. But we're not finished. Over here, I'm not joking. Over here, there's a drum machine in a pipe organ. You ready? We change sides. You get to see my other profile now. What's better, left or right, you tell me. Um, no, actually, don't leave it. Um, yeah, a drum machine in an organ. I'm not joking. And it's not a synthesized drum machine. It's a real drum machine with real drums. And it's called... We're in a sort of carnival part of Germany, so it's called Et Trümmersche, that sort of Gulch. That's what they would say in Cologne, or that kind of accent. And it just means little drum, basically, okay? And it is literally, let me switch it on, a drum. It gets better though. If you don't like the drums, then why not have the bells? There's exactly the same sort of thing on the other side. It says bells, and we can have a little rhythm going there with bells. Is there anything this organ can't do? Let's find out. I imagine a number of you, while we were playing with our percussions there, said, good heavens, what on earth is that? And there's this sort of this cross-shaped selection of goodies here. And it's sort of like a floating free registration sampler, I suppose. So yeah, here, sort of modern music people amongst yourselves, you'll know what this is like. Eh? You've got sort of your sample pads and things like that. That's basically what this is. So you, when you're playing your weird, wonderful, modern improvisations, I have no idea what you'd use that for, but it's, it's kind of cool, I suppose. If you want to, like I said, like the other stuff, if you want to annoy people when you play in the organ, then that's basically what this is there for. And it's kind of cool to see it do this as well, because when you press these buttons, everything else lights up. Look at that. Like some sort of weird electronic gremlin doing its thing. 
kind of like that. It's weird. I don't know what I would use it for, but it, uh, it has a certain something. But before I finally get round to playing a piece of music on this magnificent instrument, I thought I would... There's one more thing I have to introduce to you. I'll do that in a minute. But I have to tell you who this organ is, de was designed by and where did it come from. And back in the 70s, there was a, an organ builder in Germany called a Walker, not to be confused with the international Walker, okay? Completely different, the Walker. And now, uh, Walker had its, had its day, as it were. It was very into sort of neo-baroque sounding instruments. And it wasn't really, wasn't really known for sort of the, the highest of quality, shall we say? But anyway, Walker built a lot of interesting organs, and this is one of them. And the organist, Peter, who put this organ into this church, wanted all these amazing features. And none of the other organ builders out there were sort of able to sort of come up with a way of doing it. This weird percussion thing here, all this sort of stuff, these weird... Um, mixtures and, th and, and all these things, yeah, and uh, Valka sat down with the organist and they designed this organ and it worked. And it worked for a long, long, long time. Uh, it was very well built and put together and it worked perfectly for a while until, you know, with age as it is, as normal in the organ world, they sort of start falling apart. So last year, 2018, last year the great internationally known organ builder Kleiss from Bonn up the river, um, Kleiss was asked to completely restore the organ, which they did. But they didn't change anything. They didn't add any new bits. They didn't decide to change anything. They just completely restored it as it should be. Got everything working as it should be. And I think that's wonderful because it's a, it is a piece of organ history. Bizarre though it may be, it is a piece of organ history. And I think the most bizarre feature of this organ is something that nobody can explain, and it's this. Above the upper manual, there are Letters for each note, for each note of the manual, there are letters. It starts with Q, J, W, P, and it works its way up. They start repeating themselves, and then as you get to the top, Z, X, Y, no idea what that's all about. I asked Benedict, he says he has no idea what it's all about. He asked the organ builders, they have no idea what it's all about. It, maybe it's to sort of inspire you when you're improvising, maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's got something to do with the harmonic series, maybe it doesn't. We don't know. Maybe you recognize what's going on there, and maybe you can tell us what it is. We don't know. Nonetheless, it's a very interesting thing, and certainly a conversation topic. Final feature of this organ is something that it didn't, something that really didn't exist back then very often, but now you find it in pretty much all modern electronically controlled organs. And that's a sort of a sostenuto feature. In other words, it holds the notes for you. And here you can sort of switch it on, on all the manuals, even on the pedals. And it's controlled with this incredibly large sprung pedal here down in the foot division. And what you do, you play a note, press the pedal, let go, that note keeps playing. And that will keep playing until I either press the pedal again, now it's gone, or I switch it off using that. So I can play chords and hold them. And while I'm holding those chords, I can be improvising around. Now that is a very useful effect to have. I love having that on organs where I've played my jazzy concerts. That comes in very, very useful sometimes. And here it is on an organ from the 70s, in perfect working order, thanks to Philip Kleiss. Philip, can't you build more organs like this yeah, with sort of weird features? That would be kind of cool. Okay, enough brain frying information. I think it's time, finally, for a piece of music at this rather interesting I'm going to say machine and not organ this time. Let's play a piece of music on it. That's it for today. My goodness, what an what a interesting instrument this is. Um, we like to do a bit of advertising when we can. and I don't know how many of you are around in this part of the world, but from May to November, there are regular organ concerts here in the church in Sinsej on the first Thursday of every month from May to November. Now, there's only one left for this year on the 7th. Joseph Still, or the Josef Still, who is the cathedral organist down in Trier, 
down on the border to Luxembourg. He's coming to play a concert here on this magnificent organ. But if you look at the other people that have been here to play, I mean, you can't really get much more international than my old friend Jane Parker Smith from London. So if Jane comes and plays this organ, it must be really quite something. This is a well-known concert organ. And um, I'm looking at Benedict in the background. Maybe I'll be allowed to come and play one day a bit of my sort of cinema organy jazzy stuff here on the church. He's nodding his head, so yes, I think that means yes. So um, we haven't talked about price yet, but we'll come to that later. I am still Scottish, remember. Okay, so if you're in the area, you know where to come. It's a rather wonderful instrument, and to hear it live is, of course, even better than on a recording. So yeah, thanks to Benedict for giving us the time at the organ this afternoon. It's been a rather amazing experience playing a completely different organ. It's very exciting for me, and uh, I hope that comes across in the video. So thanks for watching. Next week, we're back out and about continuing our journey around the world of the organ. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.